Amen. Well, we are blessed today. We have some special, special invited guests here with us. I've invited them to be here today, and I want to introduce them to you now. I'm, yeah, just go ahead and stay standing there. Yeah, there you go. This is Nick and Stacy Tarter right there standing up on the front row. See them? Welcome on, everybody. Amen. Amen. They have a daughter named Ellie. She's two. And Reuben, who Stacy is holding, is two months. And so they got the twos going there. Stacy, you can go ahead and be seated. And Nick, if you want to go ahead and begin to make your way up here. Let me just tell you a little bit about Nick as he's coming. Nick surrendered to God's call on his life several years ago. But when he surrendered, he knew that God was calling him into church planting. That God was calling him to be a church planter. Uh, however, for several years now, he's been serving as the youth pastor at First Baptist Church in Perry. And he, he realizes that God had been using him there in order to prepare him. Well, he knows that now it's time to venture out and to plant that church. And so Nick is being sponsored by the North American Mission Board, which is one of our Southern Baptist entities for church planting. Capital Baptist Association, which is the association that we're a part of, the Baptist General Convention of Oklahoma, and Council Road Baptist Church uh, there in Bethany. Is that right? Bethany? Council Road's in Bethany? Is that right? You grew up in Council Road. So you're, so you're a Christian, first of all, but you're Baptist to the core. Amen? Okay, that's good. <laughs> Well, well, Nick knows, Nick knows that we have, a, we have a passion for church planting as well. As a matter of fact, that has been the history of this church for many years in planting churches. Uh, Waterloo Road, uh, Henderson Hills, okay? And so we saw this as a great opportunity to multiply our witness. And so our missions committee came together and voted to help be one of the entities, one of the churches that, is, that will help sponsor Nick as, as a church planter in Oklahoma City. So Nick, would you please come and share your story with us, brother? Well, I'm very excited to be here this morning. Uh, I know many faces here. Uh, we've got a long standing relationship with the Haygoods and, and with others in the room. So it's, it's great to be here among friends. And uh, Pastor Blake's been very gracious uh, in, in this whole process and as a friend and uh, fellow pastor. And so it's been a good time to just get to know you. I want to share a little bit of my story with you just so you get to know this church planter that you are sponsoring. And uh, I, it, like I, I always start, it all began December 26th of 1984, but I won't really go back that far. But anyway, uh, I... Uh, I was a, a young man who grew up in the Southern Baptist Church. Uh, as Blake said, I grew up at Council Road in Bethany, and my family were members there since long before I was born. And uh, so I was raised there and was raised in Sunday school, grew up knowing the Word of God, and very blessed because of that. I'm very grateful to that. I'm grateful to my home church and to uh, my heritage as a Southern Baptist. And, uh, but it wasn't until I was a teenager when the Lord really got a hold of my life. Uh, I was, I guess, so exposed to... The faith and to you know the answers I guess I had all the right answers for everyone all the time I thought surely I have such a pedigree of Christianity my grandparents were Christians my parents are Christians I thought surely that that includes me and uh, and I just sort of fell into that and that was my that was my lot in life I'm a, I'm a believer and, and really uh, I but deep down inside I was the hurting kid who wanted to fit in so badly but felt like I had a hard time fitting in uh, with certain people particularly the ones I wanted to at school and so I just sort of became a chameleon, and I just fit into the world. And so for years, that was me, until I was around uh, t 13 years old, and the Lord just grabbed a hold of my life and completely changed me. I came under the realization that it is grace that saves us. And, and, and so I, I began to realize it wasn't anything that I could do. I couldn't earn my way to God. It was only when He came to me, when, when Christ stepped out of heaven and came to me and took on my life that I could never live, lived the perfect life I could never live, and died the death that I should have died as substitution for me, that that was the only thing that saved me. And so the Lord changed my life. And, and so from that point on, uh, he's been messing with me and, and, and poking me and prodding me and growing me into the person he wants me to be. And, and he's not done. You can ask my wife. Um, she will probably give you a testimony also if you want to know. But uh, the Lord, but I'm a work in progress, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but I was a teenager when the Lord let me in on his desire for me to be in full-time ministry. And so that was, uh, I fought that. Uh, some of you guys who have surrendered to ministry, you probably know about the fight, right? Because you had your plans. You know, I was going to be a pediatrician. That's what I was going to do. I love kids. 
Um, my wife will tell you I want to have like eight of them. I don't know if we're quite on the same page, but, but I love kids. Uh, and, and so I, I just, I, I, that's what I wanted to do. But the Lord just kept poking me. And, and, and so I, I, finally, I finally said yes uh, at, at a meeting at Falls Creek one, one year. And, of course, I put my own stipulations on it. I said, okay, God, but I love to play music, so I'll be a music minister. I noticed this guy back here playing this Gibson SJ200. Nice guitar, by the way. Um, and I'm a guitar player. Uh, and so I, I thought, well, I'll just be a musician, Lord. I'll, I'll, lead, I'll lead worship. And, and, uh, and then my youth pastor one day comes up to me and says, Nick, God has called you to preach. Just out of the blue. I don't know where this is coming from. I'm, I'm like, well, you know, I don't know what the Lord's been telling you, but I'm going to be a musician. I've, in fact, I had plans to be the next Christian rock star, and I was going to do that. Preach the gospel while I played my guitar, which is great, but that's not what the Lord had for me. And so we began to walk through that. Over time, I, I, I eventually surrendered to that as well. And uh, as Blake shared with you, as I came to surrender to that, I came to realize that, that I was very interested in church planting which is sort of a little bit of a scary thing because it's not just, you're not just walking into a church that's there and ready to support you. You are having to build a support base. You're having to, because you've got a church with just a few people that the tithes and offerings of 20 people doesn't quite support a full-time salary for a pastor and his family. And so I have a wife and two kids. And so I'm thinking, you know, I, this is, this is a, this is a step, but it's something we felt like the Lord called us to. And particularly about a year ago, he gave me a vision. And I remember I was driving through the city and I grew up in the Oklahoma City area. We were on the east side of Yukon, and, and like, like I said, I went to Council Road growing up. This is, this is home for me, the Oklahoma City metro. We're driving through the city, and at the time, I had some other opportunities out there. I have a friend who was planting a church up in the northeast who invited me to come join their team and plant another church in a different town. We had opportunities. And I had a guy in Colorado invite me to come and join his church planting team. We, we had a lot of things going on, but then the Lord just really impressed on my heart that day your hometown is lost. And not a lot of people even recognize that. I guess because we, we you know, for me, I grew up here. Uh, most of the people that I know are Christians. Makes sense because I've been in church my whole life. So a lot of my friends I grew up around were believers. And I don't really think that much outside of my bubble of Christianity, outside of my, my Christian culture. But some numbers really began to hit me. There's a man named uh, Dave Olson who put together a research project over the course of about 30 years now, uh, called the American Church Research Project. And part of this is he took statistics, attendance statistics, for every church that would basically give him attendance statistics in the country. For the ones they couldn't get statistics for, they extrapolated based on other uh, churches around the area that were similar size. And, and so they, but they came up with, a, with what's, what I believe is the greatest research project of churches, of church attendance in America that's ever been done. And what they came up with based on actual numbers, not just testimonies of people. You know, if you go ask somebody in Oklahoma, did you go to church last Sunday? Most of the time you're going to get, oh, sure. Even though we all see what the difference is in the highway on Sunday morning versus Monday morning, right? Almost everybody will tell you they went to church because we have a little bit of a grandma said I should. So I probably ought to at least feel like I should. That sort of is that way here. It's not that way in the whole country, but, but it sort of still is that way here. But the realization is that only around 80% or around 20% of Oklahomans actually attend church on a given Sunday. So right now, in the entire state of Oklahoma, about 20% of people are in church, which is a number that's far lower than what most of us probably have in our minds. The BGCO, uh, the, the coaches that I work with with the church planting team, they assume that probably around 70% of people in Oklahoma are lost. And I say that's, a pro that's probably a pretty good number. Because we have a lot of people who, who say they're Christian, but they've never had a, a, a life-changing relationship with Christ. They've had a religious experience, possibly. Or, or they just think, well, because they live in Oklahoma and grandma was a Christian and mom was a Christian, then I probably am. I know this in my generation, the number of church attendance is significantly lower. 12 to 15 percent of people between the age of 20 and around 35 it's very low. And, and so, so those numbers just began to press on me, almost like the weight of my forgiveness has pressed on me and changed my life, this, this, this weight of lostness in my own hometown. And what the Lord said to me is, you know what, Nick, everybody thinks that's the Baptist belt, and so there aren't as many people. Like North American Mission Board doesn't even have Oklahoma City listed in the places where they're, they're targeting to plant churches, and yet 
only 20% of Oklahoma City, actually less evangelical, but attend church. That's a problem. And, and so the Lord really impressed me. We are not reaching our home the way that he, that, that he would have us to do. And the reason why I think that is for a lot of us, and I think it's unintentional, and I'm, this is me, okay. We have a tendency when we, when we do a church service or we plan a church of, of any kind to, to think about Christians because that's who we are. We think about us. And so the majority of us, when we start a, a new Sunday school class or, or, or we, we think about our church service, we're starting something really that's built for Christians because we're building around what we think we like. But lost people don't think the way we think. I heard a, uh, an interesting quote from the same guy who did the uh, American Church Research Project. He said, you know, for, for, uh, for lost people, they feel about as guilty about not coming to church on Sunday as you feel about not going to synagogue on Saturday. And it's true. They, it's not even on their radar. Most people I talk to, they don't feel bad that they're not here. Uh, now, I would feel bad if I didn't come to church on Sunday because I, I grew up that way. But most people don't think that way. And so we, what we had to do is we, we said, well, we've got to plant a church in Oklahoma City because that's where the Lord is leading us. We've got to plant a church that somehow breaks into that 70% of lost people. Most of them, uh, research says that 80% of lost people don't even care about any sort of religious experience on a Sunday or any other day of the week for that matter. They just don't care. It's not on their radar. They think they're okay. Their life is fine. They've, they're, they're stable. They don't know that they need Jesus. They don't, they don't realize that they're sinners like, like most of us recognize. And so we decided we've got, to, we've got to figure out a way. How can we plant a church that's designed to reach lost people? Because we believe the mission of Jesus, as he tells us in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, is to seek and save the lost. And we believe that John 20, 21, Jesus says, As the Father has sent me into the world, so send I you into the world. So we basically believe that if Jesus is sending us into the world as the Father has sent him into the world, then we're sent for the same purpose as him, and that's to seek and save the lost. And so for us, we were like, we've got to plant a church that that is the core focus from the very beginning. And that we have to keep that at the core focus. Because we all know, with any of us who've been in a church that's been around for a long enough period of time, it's not easy to keep that focus. We build up a nice uh, place and a nice, and, and then it becomes a lot of times about maintaining that. And we sort of forget the kingdom. And we have to rein ourselves back in. And every church is going to go through that. At some point, our new church, City Life, will go through that. But we have a few things that we're focusing on. Um, and it all spins back down to the Great Commission. Obviously, I am a Southern Baptist, and we, we kind of are obsessed with that scripture. I always have been. But we have three things that we pull out of there. We're told by Jesus that we're to make disciples, baptize them, teach them to observe everything that he's commanded. And so for us, we pull three things out of that, that we're supposed to, to bring people to a knowledge of God. We're to, to bring people to a knowledge of not just of God, but also to his precepts and how to actually live like Christ has called us to live. And then if we actually obey Christ in all things, like Jesus said we're supposed to teach people to do, then eventually we'll all become disciple makers. And it becomes a circle that never ends. And so hopefully for us, what we're doing is we're trying to build a church that reaches into the, the, the core of Oklahoma City to begin to reach. And we hope to have a presence one day in every neighborhood in the city that's doing this. Making disciples, seeing people come to Jesus and then plugging them into a discipleship cycle that eventually spins them back around to become a disciple maker so that what we have is multiplication. And we hope that we lose control of this. I hope that at some point I have, there are so many of these going on all around of this, of this transformative discipleship where people are becoming disciple makers who are redeemed and shaped by grace. I pray that that happens, that this blows up and we can't control it because then it's the Holy Spirit working and not just us. But we're called to go and make disciples. That's the center of everything that we want to do. I want you to know that's the church that you're supporting, a church that is going into the world intentionally to make disciples of, of the lost all around us. And they are all around us. And I would challenge you also, if that's not on your radar, to join us. And I know that's what Pastor Blake's doing. Um, so, Blake, if you want to come, and we'll, or it's back to Keith. Okay, well, I appreciate you um, having me here this morning, and I'm glad I was able to share my testimony. And may God bless you. Uh, and I thank you on behalf of City Life, on behalf of, of uh, many lost people who are going to hear the gospel through our church for supporting us.